Hi friends, today we will have some idea about cardiac pacing and nursing care of the patient who is having cardiac pacemaker. Before begin, I would like to thank everyone who is supporting me and for the promotion of my channel. I am expecting this support for the coming videos in the future also. Okay, about cardiac pacing. If you are looking to the history, the first transvenous pacing were introduced in uh, early 1960s. Since then, many studies and many development came to this pacing technology. Nowadays, we have many modalities in cardiac pacemaker that we will discuss in this presentation. Okay, let's start with the normal conductive system of the heart. Here it is. Uh, it is a diagrammatic representation for that. We can see here this SA node. Uh, sinoatrial node, it is a uh, AV node that means atrial ventricular node and here it is bundle of his and here it is uh, Purkinje fibers and all the four chambers we can see okay let's go for definition what it is uh, what it means it is an electric device that delivers direct electrical stimulation to stimulate the myocardium <coughs> to depolarize. It is initiating a mechanical contraction. Okay, now we will see indication for that uh, when we will use the pacemaker. Here is symptomatic bradycardia and the second one it is symptomatic heart block. It is first degree, second degree or third degree heart blocks, bifascicular or transfascicular bundle branch blocks and for the prophylaxis treatment. And here we go for the pacemaker design. We have two major components for that. First one is pulse generator and the second one is uh, leads. Let's go for details. Uh, pulse generator. In permanent pacemaker, it is encapsulated in a metal can. Why? Because we need to protect it from the electromagnetic interference. Let's see an example for that. This is an example for permanent uh, pacemaker and it is temporary pacemaker. You can see here a picture for temporary pacemaker. In this, the, pace, the pulse generator is contained in a small box and outside. That means it is external and temporary. Uh, this is, it is transcutaneous pacemaker and looks like a piece of equipment similar to the portable ECG machine. Here, these are the leads. Okay, we have two types, single chamber, it means unipolar, and we have double chamber, it's bipolar. First, we will see single chamber. The lead, in single chamber, the lead plays in atrium or ventricle. It produces a large spike on the ECG sensing and pacing in the same chamber where, the, where it is located. It is more likely to be affected by electromechanical interferences. We will see the diagram here. Uh, see, we can uh, notice that a single line is going to the ventricle. That means it is single chamber. Only one chamber is involved here. And uh, next, we will see in dual chamber bipolar pacemaker. So there are two leads. One lead is located in atrium and one in the ventricle and sensing and pacing in both chambers mimicking the normal heart function. So let's see the diagram here. So one lead is going to the ventricle and the other one it is ending with the atrium. So the, the pacing is starting from here and goes like this and produce invisible spike in the ECG. And we cannot see any spikes in the ECG, so it, lo it mimicking the normal heart function. And there is one more plus point, it is uh, less affected by electromechanical interference. So let's see something about the principles of pacing. Principal concept, I mean the, the electrical concept, electrical circuit. The pacemaker to the patient and patient to the pacemaker. The, the circuit is going like this, pacemaker to the patient and patient to the pacemaker. And the current, the flow of electrons in a completed circuit. It is measured in milliampere and the voltage a new 
uh, about a unit of electrical pressure or force causing electrons to move through the circuit and it is measured in millivolts impedance the resistance to the flow of current and the temporary pacing types one is uh, transcutaneous it is emergency used with the external pacing and transvenous it is emergency used with the external pacemaker uh, and epicardial wires switched to the right atrium and right ventricle atrial wires exit on the right of the sternum and the ventricle wires exit on the left of the sternum this epicardial usually we can see uh, the post operative cardiac patients usually we are getting the patient with the epicardial wires and see uh, the modes of pacing atrial pacing intact av conduction system required the ventricle pacing uh, loss of atrial kick discordant ventricular contraction and sustained cardiac output atrial ventricular pacing it's uh, it's a natural pacing there will be atrial ventricular synchrony here we go the three letter nbg pacemaker core these are the cores we are using for setting the pacemaker usually the pacemaker settings are coming like uh, aai vvi dd d like that so we will see what it means the first letter it is representing the chamber where it is paced the chamber paced v ventricle a atrium if it is d dual atrium and ventricle both and o for none uh, it will be more clear in the coming uh, examples i will go through with that the second letter is uh, chamber where it is sense if it is v ventricle a atrium d dual atrium and ventricle o for none and the third letter it is it is the outcome means it is the sense response it is mode of response if it is t it is trigger pacing i inhibits pacing d dual o for none so these are the examples it's commonly used modes so if the mode is a a i it is atrial demand pacing it means atrial pacing and sensing if no electrical impulse sense then pacemaker will pace at a set rate if electrical impulse is sense then the pacing will be inhibit so uh, the the explanation for that it's like this if a a i and if the it is in the atrium the lead is in the atrium and if there is any uh, normal Im electrical impulse is sensed by the pacemaker from the atrium the atrium uh, the the pacemaker will inhibit the pacing so if there is normal uh, pacing from the heart itself so we don't need to push him again so uh, a a i means it will inhibit if there is any electrical impulse generated from the heart and the same way here around it's v v i it's a ventricular demand pacing it means it is pacing and sensing in ventricle and it is if there is any electrical impulse uh, or getting from the ventricle it will inhibit so it is like uh, ventricular pacing and sensing if no electrical impulse sense then pacemaker will start the pacing at the set rate uh, if electrical impulse is sensed then the pacemaker will just uh, inhibit the pacing so asynchronous pacing so if it is going for d d d it is atrial and ventricular demand pacing it is senses and paces both chambers atrium and ventricle and it is trigger or inhibit it accordingly so that means both atrium and ventricle both sensed and paced if both sa and av node functions are uh, functioning then the pacemaker will just uh, sense only if there is atrium i mean either atrium or ventricle not convey the pacemaker will take over and here it's a, it is a o o it is atrial asynchronous pacing no matter if there is any pacing any electric impulse is originating from the atrium it is located in the atrium it will just uh, pace continuously regardless of the 
uh, own pulse, own uh, electrical impulse. So it means O, O here it is none, no uh, sensing, no inhibiting or triggering. So let's see something about the nursing intervention. The, this is the nurse role uh, about the patient care with the pacemaker. We should maintain adequate cardiac output. This is the ultimate goal. So for the record information after uh, insertion of pacemaker, model, mode, program, settings, patient rhythm, attach ECG for continuous monitoring, analyze rhythm strip as per protocol, monitor vital signs, monitor urine output, observe for arrhythmias, monitor for evidence of bleed, migration and perforation of heart. It is very dangerous. So we should observe for muscle twitching and hiccups. Evaluate chest pain, auscultate for friction rub, observe for signs of cardiac tamponade. The other one is provide electrically safe environment. For that, protect the exposed parts of electrode leads with the rubber uh, or plastic. Uh, that means uh, non-conducting substances. Uh, wear always rubber gloves when touching the temporary pacing leads because uh, your fingertips uh, may have electrical charges. If you are touching the electrodes with the bare hand, it may uh, these electric charges may pass through the, uh, the conducting wires, so it will disturb the heart again. Be aware of hazards in the facility that can interfere with the pacemaker and cause failure. So for that, we should avoid use of electrical racers, avoid direct placement of defibrillator. Uh, paddles over the generator should be placed four to five inches away. Patient with permanent pacemaker should never expose to MRI because it may alter and erase the program in memory. Uh, caution must be used if the patient will receive radiation therapy and prevent accidental pacemaker malfunctions uh, by use ex external plastic co plastic covering over the extended generator all the times. Secure temporary pacemaker over patient chest or wrist. It should not uh, hang on the IV pole. And uh, place a sign, sign board. Place a sign board over the patient bed or alerting personnel to the presence of pacemaker. Uh, so we should take care accordingly. And uh, evaluate transcutaneous spacing every two hours. Monitor for electrolyte imbalances. Uh, hypoxia and myocardial uh, infarction and the main thing uh, we should prevent the infection uh, by uh, checking uh, the signs of infection like take temperature every four hour observe for signs and symptoms of infection and we should observe uh, sterile taking all the time for changing and uh, cleaning the wound changing dressing uh, monitor vein which patient plays for the signs of lobitis, administer antibiotic as ordered, relieving anxiety by giving moral support and teaching, uh, relieving pain by using, uh, by using analgesia as per orders, and minimizing the effect of immobility by, using, uh, by giving physiotherapy. Uh, reset, I mean, the rest for, for 24 to 48 hours post pacing insertion deep breathing exercises, restricts movement of affected extremity. So uh, let's see something about the patient education here. We should educate the patient uh, because the permanent pacemaker uh, patient is uh, going uh, discharge after a few days of observation. So we should educate the patient how to take care and what uh, what is the alarm signs for failure like that. So. Uh, we should educate like uh, briefly about the anatomy and physiology of the heart, uh, pacemaker function, how it works, and activities, uh, the restrictions of the activities, and pacemaker failure. So uh, how to know, how to get uh, checked periodically about the pacemaker, uh, and how if it is failure, we should notify and we should seek medical attention. So teach the patient to check on pulse and check pulse at least uh, weekly once, one complete minute and report 
slowing on the pulse or less great or uh, greater than the set rate uh, report signs and symptoms as palpitation fatigue dizziness prolonged hiccups and uh, wear identification bracelet and uh, carry a pacemaker identification card so it will alert the personnel around so uh, we should take a uh, if something goes wrong, the healthcare professionals will be uh, not uh, will be uh, uh, notified about this pacemaker is in place. And uh, electromagnetic interference. Uh, caution patients that electromagnetic interference could interfere with the pacemaker function. Explain that high energy radar, TV and radio transmitters, MRI, large motors may affect the pacemaker function. And teach the patient to move four to six meters away from the source and check pulse. It should return to the normal as soon as possible. And it's very important also. And thank you for watching me.